Alright guys, I wanted to make a video talking about how to find the vertex. Um, and then in order to find the vertex, we'll also have to look at how to find the axis of symmetry in some cases. Um, so really, you're going to see equations written in one of two ways. Um, one way, it may look like this. y equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. Um, this is called standard form. You have an, a quadratic term. You have a linear term, and you have a constant term. In other words, you have one with an x squared, one with an x, and one with no x's. Uh, so this is standard form. Um, to find the vertex and axis of symmetry in this case, you have to first find the axis of symmetry. There's an equation for that, x equals minus b over 2a. In this case, b is negative 4, or b is positive 4, so when you make it negative, it would be negative 4 over 2 times a, which is 1. So a, b, and c are just the numbers here, not the x's. So don't put x's into this formula. Um, only plug in the numbers. This is 1x squared plus 4x minus 5. Okay, so negative 4 over 2 would be negative 2. So our axis of symmetry is the equation x equals negative 2. If you want to find the vertex, well, you have an equation here to find y if you know what x is, and, well, now we do know what x is. So y would be negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 5. Okay, so negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 minus 5. So 4 minus 8 is negative 4. So we get negative 9 there. So our vertex would be at x equal to negative 2 and y equal to negative 9. We write that as a point, negative 2, negative 9. Okay, so nothing too difficult there if it's in standard form. Um, you may also see it written in something called vertex form, um, which would look something like this. Notice here you have uh, a binomial squared. Um, there's no reason why this can't just be an x squared as well. Um, but notice you don't have a linear term. There's nothing but just an x in it. It's all things that are squared or constants. So when your equation is in this form, finding the vertex is so super easy. Um, so your vertex is actually given to you here. Um, vertex form looks like this. y equals a x minus h squared plus k. So a is the same a that would have been over here. Um, the a will help you determine if your graph opens up or down, depending on if it's positive or negative. Um, but the h and the k are actually your vertex. Vertex would be h comma k. Um, so notice in the formula that h is negative. So when we go to write the vertex here, um, since we have a negative 2 and the formula is negative, h has to be a positive 2 and k has to be a positive 4. So we know that our vertex, in ver uh, when it's written in vertex form, is really easy to find. In this case, it would be 2, 4. And our axis of symmetry, remember that that's just the x value of the vertex, um, would be the equation x equals 2. So be really careful when you're writing the axis of symmetry. Some people just want to write down that it's 2. That's not good enough. Um, the axis of symmetry is a line. It's not just a number. So you write down an equation here, x equals 2. Okay? So that's standard form. Standard versus vertex form. Standard form has its benefits, but in this case, um, you know, finding the vertex and the axis of symmetry, standard is a lot more work, whereas the vertex form is super easy for that. Okay, let's do a couple more examples here. Uh, let's do another one that's standard form. Um, y equals negative 2x squared minus 12x plus 17. Again, start off by finding your axis of symmetry, minus b over 2a. In this case, b is already negative, so we're going to get 12 over 2 times negative 2, since a is negative as well. So we get 12 over negative 4, which would be negative 3. So our axis of symmetry is the equation x equals negative 3. 
And then if we go back and plug that in to our formula, our equation that we were given, we can solve and find what the y value is. Okay, so everywhere there was an x in your formula, you're plugging in a negative 3. And then go through and do the order of operations. So negative 3 squared would be a positive 9. Negative 12 times negative 3 would be a positive 36. So negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. 36 and 17 would be 53. And then 53 minus 18 would be 35. Okay, so your vertex would be at the point negative 3, positive 35. Okay, and let's look at another one that's in vertex form. Uh, y equals negative 3, x plus 1 squared minus 15. So your vertex would be h comma k. In this case, our h must be a negative 1, since the formula for this is a minus h, and we see a plus number here. We know that the, the x value has to be negative, and the y value is negative 15. Your axis of symmetry would be at x equals negative 1. So, lots of work, no work. Um, you just have to understand vertex form is super easy as long as you recognize that your vertex is given to you. That's the x value, that's the y value. Um, all right. I want to do one more example here of standard form um, just to show you that sometimes it's not always nice and pretty. So, uh, y equals 3x squared minus 9x minus 5. Um, so here x equals minus b over 2a. So we'd get 9 over 6, which we could reduce to 3 halves. So the axis of symmetry is the equation x equals 3 halves, which is a fraction. And when you go back to plug that in, um, well, Depending on how much you like fractions, that could be a lot of fun, or it could be a nightmare. So, uh, be really careful when you're working through this and follow the same steps you did previously. So start by squaring. Square the top and the bottom. You'd get 9 fourths. Here, I'm going to go ahead and write this as 9 over 1 times 3 over 2. And I guess I can make this 3 over 1 if I wanted to be consistent there. So multiplying fractions is not a big problem. It's tops by tops and bottoms by bottoms. Um, which I know if you're a, a mathematician, you're probably going to hate me for spreading uh, little shortcuts. But, you know, it helps some kids. So 3 times 9 is 27. 1 times 4 is 4. 9 times 3 is also 27. And 1 times 2 is 2. Minus 5. So then in order to, to combine these fractions here, we have to get a common denominator. In this case, that would be 4. So the 27 fourths we're not going to do anything with. But to make this 2 into a 4, we have to multiply it by 2. So I'm going to multiply the top by 2 as well. And make that 54 over 4. And then 5 is the same thing as 20 over 4. So now all three of these numbers have common denominators. So 27 minus 54 would be negative 27 over 4. And negative 27 minus 20 would be negative 47 fourths. Okay, so the x value that we had for our vertex was 3 halves. And after much work, we found that the y value um, would be negative 47 fourths. Okay. So standard form is the one that's not super fun to find uh, the axis of symmetry in the vertex. Um, look forward to a future video where I'll talk about how to complete the square, um, which is a method used to change from standard form into vertex form. Um, and it's, it's not quite as bad as doing all of this mess, um, although there are some things to think about. But... It's, it's much easier than, I think, finding the axis of symmetry and plugging it in. A lot less work. So, 
there's a, a couple examples again of how to find the axis and the vertex and all that fun stuff. A um, couple examples, some of standard, some of vertex. Again, vertex is great for finding the vertex. Um, standard has its benefits, one of them being that it's super easy to find the y-intercept. Um, and really that's about all that I like standard form for. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll get back to you. Otherwise, good luck.